An old saying says that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Planning, preparation, scheduling, time management. These all have something in common. We all know that they are important, and most people don't know how to go about approaching them. This workshop is going to give you some tips and suggestions for how you can improve your organizational skills and give yourself some much needed space. Set goals, prioritize, arrange the schedule, confirm expectations, and make sure you do it every day. Setting clear goals is essential for academic success and personal growth. Goals provide direction, motivation, and serve as a roadmap for your future endeavors. When you have well-defined goals, you're more likely to stay focused manage your time effectively, and make informed decisions. Whether it's excelling in a particular subject, participating in extracurricular activities, or improving time management, specificity is key. Don't just write down that you plan to study for an hour. Write down what you plan to review, what subjects and chapters you need to look back over. The more specific your schedule, the easier it is to follow. But make sure that you maintain realistic expectations for what your schedule will look like. If you aren't the kind of person that gets up early, then don't schedule your study time at 6.30 in the morning. You aren't going to be able to consistently maintain that schedule, so don't set yourself up for potential disappointment. One benefit of using specificity in your scheduling is that it makes it easier to evaluate the importance and immediacy of any given task. An example of how this works is seen in the Eisenhower Matrix, but unfortunately it won't help you learn Kung Fu. The Matrix is designed to identify how urgent and important a task is and to approach it accordingly. If a task is both urgent and important, then it demands your immediate attention, and you should work on it first. If the problem is important but it isn't urgent, you should schedule a time to deal with it in the future so you can give it the time and attention task demands. If a task is urgent but not too important, you should look to delegate that task to someone that can get to it right away, knowing that you don't need to nitpick or micromanage the solution. And if the task is neither urgent nor important, it can be ignored until adequate time allows. Arranging your schedule effectively goes a long way toward maximizing the time that you have available. Put similar tasks together and don't be afraid to be detailed in your plan of attack. This includes breaking down tasks to a more granular level. If you take a big and daunting project and just stick it on your to-do list, it can be difficult to know where to start or how to go about it. But breaking down the project into smaller individual tasks that can be accomplished. When you are breaking something down, practice the two-minute rule. If a task can be completed in two minutes or less, go ahead and do it. Get it off your plate. Keep track of those individual tasks by using visual aids such as boards with clearly defined progress markers and color coding. Technology makes keeping organized much easier than one of those leather portable planners. As an OC student, you have access to the Microsoft Office suite of programs, including Microsoft Outlook. This app can link your email to your schedule, making it much easier to keep track of everything. You can set alarms to remind you of upcoming obligations. When sitting down for that scheduled study session, how can we make the most out of the time we have available? One way is to learn the way that you learn best and to really lean into that. Everyone learns things differently. Some prefer to learn using visual resources. I listen to lots of podcasts, so I am more of an auditory learner. Some people prefer sitting down and reading the information, and some need to have more of a hands-on approach to really soak up the materials. After you spent all of this time and energy on your classwork, it would be a shame to let it all float away and not remembering any of it. This concept is called the forgetting curve. If you just listen to something in class and don't bother to ever review or follow up with it, you are going to end up forgetting most of it. This is because newly obtained information is the hardest to recall. It has a tendency to float around you without ever being truly ingested. This is one of the reasons that so many people are bad at remembering names, but repeated exposure to the material can alleviate this. So if you spend 10 minutes reviewing the material the next night, and 5 to 6 minutes a few nights later, and 2 to 3 minutes a week after your initial lecture, this flattens out the forgetting curve and makes it easier to retain everything. Since so much of being organized 
involves properly using the time that you schedule to its best possible ends. This means not doing work that isn't on the right track. Run your plan of attack and schedule by trusted sources, instructors, or classmates to make sure that you are doing things in a productive way, that you aren't spending time doing tasks that may need to be redone or reimagined. There is nothing more demoralizing than spending hours working on something that isn't important or helpful. This goes back to the Eisenhower matrix. Sometimes it can be hard to identify how urgent or important a specific task is. This is where people that are more knowledgeable can share that knowledge to save you a bunch of unnecessary effort. You can also lean on them for collaboration and advice about your approach, leading to a better end result. But the absolute most important part of practicing effective organization skills is consistency. It doesn't matter how great of a scheduling system you have put together if you don't consistently use it. Even scrawling notes on your arm is better than a schedule you won't reliably use. If you want more information on workshops, let us know at lrc at odessa.edu. Thanks for watching.